Hello everyone and welcome back to gameplay footage of my latest map in the Far Cry 5 Arcade Editor which is a map simply called Forts Wars New Dawn. Now this is of course my way of building hype and excitement for New Dawn which releases in just a few days and of course I will have a playthrough of that campaign here on the channel so I hope you'll stick around for that. But let's talk about what we have here today. If you are new around here this series is very popular on the channel and has been going for nearly a year now. So the first video I post per map is actually a speed build and I commentate over the entire process. So you get to hear all my tips and my goals that I tried to achieve with the particular map. Then we have the second video, which is what you have here today. And in this video, I reflect upon the map with some gameplay footage in the background, what worked, what didn't work in the hope that we all become better editors as a result. It's very much a reflection process. Now, as the video, will the upload schedule would suggest it's very much a one-two punch so if you haven't seen that first video be sure to go and check it out but let's start talking about this map i am really really pleased with how this particular map came out and i'm very excited to say that not only do you have this daytime gameplay footage when i finish commentating today i'll finish off also with some nighttime footage i did a brief night conversion of this particular map and in my opinion it's actually even better at night than it is in day so simply because it's a bit more atmospheric. Anyway, let's start with the good things as always. The first thing that I'm really pleased with on this map is just overcoming those harsh draw distances that Far Cry imposes, especially on console. I talked in detail about this in part one, but basically it meant that the structure of this particular map had to be very condensed, which presented a lot of gameplay challenges. Now, the second thing I'm really pleased about is that river area between the two forts. Now, the area itself I'm really pleased with. I feel like it's a really unique area to fight the opposite team, but it also helps accomplish those draw distance issues by slowing down the gameplay by creating some really narrow choke points. It took a lot of fine tuning, but I was really, really pleased with the result. The third thing that I'm also happy about on this map is just the overall scale of everything. If you watch the speed build, you might have seen I had a tunnel in the background at the start of the map because I actually intended for this map to have a vehicle route around the outside and the back of the forts. I'm so glad I bailed on that idea because now that I've played it with full lobbies, I can say that the size of the map, even as it is right now without vehicles, is just about perfect. It's that right balance between having space to move and be tactical but still intense and interesting. You never feel like you're that safe. So the scale is another thing I'm super happy with. And then finally, before we move on to improvements, spawning is another aspect of this map which I'm really, really pleased with. The forts themselves are pretty complex. They're, they have lots of nooks and crannies. I designed them specifically, so it's very, very hard to predict where a team is going or where a, yeah, where a team is going to spawn. Now that is important because as you guys know here on the channel in all my maps I try and tackle spawn killing by the by by setting it up in a way where if you go into an enemy spawn location the deeper you get in the greater the chance you will have people spawning either at the side, in front, or behind you. Basically, the closer you try and get to try and spawn kill another team, the greater the chance you will die because they then surround you. And this is a perfect example of that process in action. It's highly unpredictable, and as a result, the gameplay seems to work really well. And the game can even flow. You can have one team dominate the other, really lock them down in their fort, and then that can reverse in just a few moments. So the gameplay is highly dynamic. Anyway, let's move on to the improvements now, and there's quite a few. The first main one I've already highlighted in the speed build itself, but I think it deserves recognition here, and that is the choice of base material. I mentioned in the speed build that I worked from very limited source material on this particular map, and Upon reflection, the Far Cry New Dawn forts seem to have very metallic exteriors, mainly using shipping containers, and then having wooden or timber timber buildings within those walls. I've basically been, made my base is the opposite. The, the exterior is largely wood and the interior is metal, and I do recognize that's a fundamental flaw on my part, and it really sort of breaks it away from that New Dawn theme that I tried to accomplish. So I put my hand up there, and if I do get the time at some point, I would like to come through 
and reverse that around a little bit and uh, yeah make the make the exteriors a bit more metallic and new dawny if you will the second suggestion someone actually made last night when we were testing the night version of this map, and I agree it's a very good one, it would be nice to add some more increased identity to each fort by perhaps making one a bit remnants of the Highwaymen, which is of course a very brutal cutthroat faction in Far Cry New Dawn, and by incorporating different types of flags and decals and maybe some aggressive spikes, and just loads of horrific elements within that fort, you know, blood, bodies. I could have really themed one particular fort as the enemy, if you will, and then one fort as the peaceful people who are just trying to defend their way of life. It would have been a really good way to again further that New Dawn theme and bring a bit of storytelling and uniqueness to each team. It would have also been a good opportunity to roleplay a little bit, so in future I definitely would like to make each fort have its own unique identity and faction that you can clearly tie it to. The third thing that I think really needs improving on this map and is part of the reason why I prefer the night version is simply the surrounding environments. I really, really struggled to nail the New Dawn theme, again partly because of the limited source material I was working from, but mainly because it's just such a strange setting. We don't have any New Dawn assets in the arcade editor or any trees or anything like that. So it was really tricky to find that balance between a post-apocalyptic world that was also kind of lush at the same time. It was very strange. But either way, we got there in the end. And while I'm not too displeased with the surrounding environment, I do feel it can be better. Next, someone has suggested that I play around with fog a little bit more. I agree that could be a good solution and a good technique to hide some of the flaws in the surrounding environment. So if I'm honest, environmental effects and filters and fog is probably the area I'm least comfortable with in the arcade editor, which is why you don't really see them in my maps that often. Of course I use them, but I just don't use them to great effect. I would definitely like to expand upon those skills at some point, so I can use them to my advantage in maps like this. Then finally, the very last suggestion someone has made is to increase the vibrancy of all the flowers and all the grass and the fireweeds on this map by adding a more intense effect. For those of you that don't know, you can actually achieve a relatively good uh, New Dawn effect and you can you can do that by applying the cyber filter I have actually got that applied on this particular map, but it's very it's not very intense It's very light and that's done for the purpose of simply while it increased the vividness of the plants It did also just sort of wash out the image and made it a little bit weird So it was a bit of a balancing act and as a result that the filter isn't too intense but a side effect of that is that it doesn't look extremely like New Dawn. That was just one last suggestion as well. Finally, I want to finish up with the positives of this map, or the biggest positive. And I have to say that, for me at least, it was the terrain work. The surrounding environment is quite poor, I've said that already, but the actual terrain work between the two forts, I am so pleased with. It took hours of finessing, as I'm sure you saw in the speed build. But, and it, well, it was very, very tricky. It took a lot of little fiddling and finessing. It was very frustrating, I will not lie. Just because we had so many undulating things, I had to marry uh, stone walls with the curvature of terrain. It was just a nightmare all around. But I received the biggest compliment last night, and that was when one of the players said, I watched the speed build, and only now do I have a proper appreciation for the terrain work on this map. And for me, that's the best news because it shows that despite the difficulty, any flaws or anything like that with the terrain are hidden behind the bushes and the terrain work and just how well it's all put together. So the fact I think I overcame that challenge because clearly no one spotted any extremely dodgy terrain work, that for me was the biggest relief because it was a massive, massive faff. And even at some points I was considering just trying to simplify the terrain, reduce the choke points just to make my life easier. I'm so glad I stuck through that because by the sounds of it, it's more or less on point and the players seem to enjoy the environment. So that's the pros and cons of the map, guys. A lot of that has come from your comments, not just mine. And I really appreciate the feedback I constantly get on all my maps, whether that be the Sandplace test team who helped me test my maps in advance. You can find 
find info on that in the description or whether it be here on YouTube. I always appreciate your constructive and fair feedback. The This particular build is the last one for a while now simply because I will be dedicating my focus to Far Cry New Dawn and showing that off on the channel. Don't worry, speed builds will certainly be back and I am already working on the next one, which should release some point in March. Now that is a very special build that is going to celebrate one year of the channel. That is all the information I'm gonna give you, but I cannot wait to show you that build. I am so pumped to get that finished and pump it out to you guys. But in the meantime, I am looking forward to Far Cry New Dawn. It does mean that the schedule here on the channel basically goes out the window and that will come back to some sort of normality once the hype around New Dawn dies down a little bit. Aside from that, guys, I do have an announcement video coming for March's uh, subscriber map showcase challenge where you can get your maps featured here on the channel. That's coming very, very soon as well. But thank you as always for your support, guys, and I will see you in another video very, very soon. Enjoy the gameplay. Almost there. Get 
victory is imminent. Success. Team Deathmatch. team is in the lead.
victory is imminent. imminent. You are victorious. Mm -hmm.